Sukum Mimus. A discounted Spinosaurus that will probably jump you if you get too close to the water. While not the biggest, he's still one of the tallest carnivores in the game. But is that size only for show? Does size really matter? Can you win by size alone? Or do you need a certain amount of skill behind each bite? Let's find that out in this video. Hello there, my name is Adam Bokte, and like I just said, today I will be teaching you how to fight properly as a Sukumimus. Or at least I will try. First of all, let's get those disclaimers out of the way. At the time of this video, we have gotten some new combat changes to the game, but hopefully the changes from the combat for Sukumimus on the strategy and such shouldn't be too different. And of course, if we do get some major changes for Sukos, then I of course will uh, try and update uh, the combat guide. The other disclaimer is, well, I said before that my time with some other creatures are limited. And that is not an understatement when it comes to the Sukumimus. To be completely honest, uh, at the time for this, or well, to get, gather footage for this video, this was actually the first time I played the Sukumimus to actually play the Sukumimus. Sure, I kind of fickled with the, the Sukumimus back in the days of Panjura, you know, just to see how it was, but I didn't really play the creature to play the creature. So my time with the Sukumimus, I'm very limited. So of course, one of your more uh, experienced Sukumimus uh, players will of course probably find what I'm saying a bit disagreeable and if you do, just comment your input down below and just be mature about it. First I will cover the Sukumimus arsenal, then we will go over to what subspecies you should grow and to why you should grow that subspecies. After that we shall continue with what terrain you should go for. This order of covering things are a bit different to what I've been doing up to now, but trust me, the choice of terrain are really important for this creature in particular. Afterward, we shall take a look on what you can do during a battle. Of course, depending on your situation. You are a semi-aquatic after all. Your battles can be on both land and in water. And of course, this also depends on how many opponents you are facing. For arsenals on abilities on head, we got your standard bite. No alternative, so equip that. For senses, we have two abilities. We have one that gives you clearer sight on the water, not really combat related, so we won't be using that. Then we have Drench Blows that deals increased 10% damage to wet targets. This also applies to creatures who's gotten wet from rain, so fighting when it's during rain will grant you a little bit of an advantage. In other words, make sure your enemies are nice and wet before you lay into them and... The claw deals an incredible amount of bleed damage and with no other alternatives, it is a must to have. We have two options for hides. We have the amphibious scales that just lessen your water drain on land. Not too combat oriented, so not one of what I would use during combat. The other are just the swim skin which increases your swimming speed and turn radius speed in water. Something I would definitely equip especially if you're going for a water battle. It makes escaping to water more easily, so I have it even on land. Leg abilities has web feet, which basically just increases your swimming speed and decreases stamina drain. Doesn't say anything about negative effect uh, having it on land, so I say it's okay to have it equipped at all times. For tail abilities, we have two abilities. One is the standard tail attack, which I would always equip when walking on land, it just makes sense. And the other one which is just a swimming tail and I would always equip this one in water because I'll come back to this later. In water, mobility is key. Like I said, this was my first time really playing the Sukumimus so I didn't really know how to play it to begin with. And you know, knowing that it's related to the Spinosaurus, I thought yeah, it might not be as tanky as the Spino but it's big. It's gotta have some real power behind its bite, right? right? It really doesn't. Its real power comes from its bleed, so trying to go head to head with the people are really not that smart of an idea. And trust me, I have tried. 
Be it Gigas. Spinos. Or Rexus. Okay, maybe it was a bit too naive of me to think that uh, this mid-tier dinosaur can compete with the, the Apexes was pretty dumb actually. So with an understanding that hit and run is much better than head-to-head -head combat, our chosen subspecies should be revolved around that strategy. With defense you can take your extra time making sure that you get that high bleed into your enemies. If you do get hit, you can take a few bites before it gets critical. You just have to make sure that they don't hit you in a really severe area like your head. With speed, you really have one chance to get a bleed in every time you attack. And you can't just run thoughtlessly into your enemies. You have to make sure that you are able to escape as well on the return out. And if you do get hit, try to make it so that they hit your tail rather than your body. The balance one are pretty much the one I recommend most. I mean, it's just the two strategies uh, combined into one. Of course, you still need to worry about any incoming damage and extra effect, and also have a plan to dodge. I mentioned that terrain are really important for Sukos, and if we look at the Sukos attack range, it has pretty much every corner covered. While not in Apex, it's still pretty tall, and it's capable of landing a headshot even on flat terrain. That being said, the Suko's inability to do a fully head-to-head -head clash means that when you do suffer enough damage, you will have to heal to stay in the fight. Of course, if you're on land, your enemy can just follow you wherever and make healing really difficult. In other words, places like Salt Flats is a really stupid place for to pick fight as a Suko. Stay in places with water, lots of water. And if you're in a location that doesn't have a lot of water, some water is better than no water. Having a place where they can't get to you is a key way to win any battles. Slowly but surely you'll be able to drain their HP bar. Of course you just gotta make sure you watch your own HP bar as well. If you do have a large body of water close by, then you're good to go to try your luck. Dodging and weaving, doing hits and run, and returning to water if it comes to it. To get a clearer understanding of what you should do, here's a high-tech bird's eye view on what you should do. Basically, you do the normal hit and run, you go in, do a slash, and to get out of any sticky situation, you just go back into the water. If you have suffered a lot of damage and you need to heal, then just simply go over to the other side. If your enemy do follow you to try and stop you from healing, then simply just cross over and start healing on the other side. Just repeat if they do follow you even after that. After you repeated this a lot of times, then you'll eventually see results. Your enemy will try and bait you away from the water, in which case, don't fall for the bait. If they are serious about killing you after you attack them, then just make sure that they know where you want to fight. Of course if you can heal, then so can they, and if they have a faster healing rate than you, then it's a lost cause. Of course, with this strategy, it will take time to take anything down, so patience is key. That's why if you want a bit of a faster hunt, then I would recommend a group. It's not impossible to take down big targets. Take a look for example at this T-Rex, which I definitely did not steal from a bunch of Spinos who violently fought the Rexes, killed them, and then threatened them for their corpse once they were weakened. Of course I wouldn't do anything cowardly like that, you don't think I'm a warrior? There's also the scenario of people just leaving after you attack them, and that is understandable. You have water right beside you and they can't enter, so on their part it will be a losing battle. So you did drive them away, so do we count that as a win? Water's definitely your biggest ally when it comes to fighting 101, but what should you do if you had to fight 101 in the water? Well, when it comes to creatures who have better stats than you, then fighting them in a smaller body of water is a terrible decision. 
The only thing you have better than them are mobility and speed, and if you fight in an enclosed area, you're kinda limiting yourself from moving, making it easier for them to hit you. If you are in a larger body of water, then you'll find mobility much easier for you. You'll just have to outmaneuver your opponents, dodge their attack, apply bleed and bide your time. Of course, don't underestimate your opponent's damage. They are devastating. So if you do need to heal, then run away, get some distance and start healing. Of course, if they follow you, then just run further away and keep on healing. After you recovered enough, then come back for more. Just a clarification, some servers might not approve of this method and this type of hunting or battling, so before you even try this, at least make sure you don't uh, break any rules on the servers you're playing on. Now back to the theme at hand, another creature who is facing the same difficulties as the Sukumimus, you'll find him that this creature is also a kind of a glass cannon. Sarkus Sukus. The crocodile alligator, who cares? who is capable of even two-shotting some creatures. With the added damage, it is best to get the jump of them. The extra damage they do are only applied if they get the first hit. They also have terrible HP, meaning that they are even more of a glass cannon than Sukumimus. Of course, you still gotta watch out for that bite. But, in a head-to-head -head combat, you can actually have the advantage. Of course, don't be too cocky. You still need to outmaneuver them. Their bites are still devastating. The pauses between Sarkisukus' attack are the openings you need to look for when attacking. While the stat sheet does say that Sarkisukus are faster and more agile in water compared to the Sukumimus, you are pretty fast and agile yourself. And it's not really conspicuous the way they charge up their bites, so it's not too difficult to dodge. Also, as they are built to be ambush predators, and with terrible mobility on land, they are pretty much confined to water. So if a battle shouldn't go your way, then you can always just retreat onto land. If you're attacked by multiple adversaries on both land or water, then let's see what you should do in both situations. First, let's look on land. Low tiers or mid tiers, if you find yourself in a battle with any of them, and you see that they are more than you can handle, then always have an escape route. You don't really have any good damage output, and even if you make people bleed, they can just go and heal while the other distract you. If you don't have any water to escape to, then I would just put my back against the wall and start praying that I kill something before they can kill me. There's only so many enemies you can have in water, and if you see a pack of any of them, then I would just suggest this. Turn around and move the other direction. You already had to put a lot of effort to kill one guy, two might be a bit too much for you. So to sum it up, if you're gonna fight, make sure you have access to a large body of water. Focus on getting that bleed into your enemy, and do hits and run. If you need to heal, heal, but make sure they can't get to you easily, and eventually they'll succumb to blood loss. Same strategy for water fights, except that you go onto land and further into land if you need to heal. And then, after you healed, come back for more. Also make sure that you don't break any server rules by doing this. If you're attacked by multiple adversaries on land, get into water. And if you're attacked by multiple adversaries in the water, get on land. And if you're attacked by multiple adversaries on both ends, then they are freaking mixpacking and cheating. I freaking hate Zuko!